Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Against All Odds is a 1984 American romantic thriller film directed by Taylor Hackford. It stars Rachel Ward, Jeff Bridges, James Woods, Alex Karras, Jane Greer, and Richard Widmark. It's somewhat of a remake of a 1947 movie called Out of the Past. In that film, Jane Greer played the film Fatale in it. The storyline for this version goes that Los Angeles Outlaws receiver Terry Brogan is cut from the team because he has an injured shoulder. Needing work and money and a sense of purpose, he gets a lucrative short-term job with an old acquaintance of his, nightclub owner Jake Wise. That job is to locate his girlfriend who is hiding out somewhere in the Mayan Riviera. The girlfriend, Jessie Weiler, just happens to be the adoptive daughter of the outlaw's ruthless owner, Grace Weiler. Jessie doesn't much like her mother, who in turn doesn't like that Jessie is in a relationship with Jake, a man known to be on the wrong side of the law. Once Terry finds Jessie, she is waiting for him, or at least for someone sent by Jake. But without telling Jake, Terry decides to quit his job as he's falling in love with the lovely Jessie, who also seems to be falling in love with him. But it isn't until he gets back to Los Angeles that Terry slowly sees the big picture of where he fits in to Jake's life and to what extent Jake will go to get Jesse back. Interestingly enough, the movie features two cameo appearances by stars from that original movie Out of the Past, on which the film is based. The first being Jane Greer, who played Katie Moffat in the first movie. She plays Rachel Ward's mother. And it's pretty interesting, another degree of separation is that she held, as an infant, Jeff Bridges in the 1951 movie, The Company She Keeps, in a scene with his real-life mother, Dorothy Bridges. And then there's Paul Valentine, who played Hood Joe Stephanos in the first movie, plays a councilman in this film. James Woods and Jeff Bridges absolutely loved working with Richard Widmark, and they fondly remember that the late actor had a love for pancakes. He used to have a plate waiting for him while shooting a scene, and Woods and Bridges would often play a trick on him and hide it. Widmark would refuse to go back to shooting the scene before the cakes had been recovered. They contacted Phil Collins to record a song for the film. Collins had written Against All Odds. Originally, he had titled that, How Can You Just Sit There? This was from his first solo album called Face Value, and it was one of the many songs on that album which were about his first wife who had left him. Collins had left that song off the album because he felt he had enough ballads on face value already, and he hadn't included it in his second solo album either. After the director requested a song, he decided to return to it, and he recorded it in two days. That theme song for the movie, also known as Take a Look at Me Now, was a huge success for him. It won him a Grammy Award for Best Male Pop Vocal Performance in 1985. It was also nominated for an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for Best Original Song. Collins himself was the only nominee in the Academy Awards category not invited to sing his song on stage. Instead, he had to sit in the audience as dancer Ann Rinkin gave a lip-sync performance accompanied by a dance routine. His perceived negative reaction to this 
albeit not shown on the telecast, made this performance to be considered one of the most awkward moments in the history of the ceremony and has been a favorite reference for Dennis Miller to relate to someone reacting in a horrified fashion. The spectacular Mexican locations in the film included the colorful resort island of Cozumel. They also used a fishing village off the coast of Cancun and the famous ruins of Itza in the jungles of Yucatan. This production was the first time that permission had been granted by the Mexican government to use these sacred ruins for a theatrical motion picture. Jeff Bridges was initially the director Taylor Hackford's preferred choice for the lead in An Officer and a Gentleman from 1982. But Bridges had a packed schedule at that time, and he had to turn it down. But he never forgot him. He kept him in mind when he created this character of Terry Brogan for this movie. The director said that one of his biggest problems in the production was to find an actress who could play the role of Jesse Weiler. The quality that he was looking for was not in great abundance in those days. He wanted a girl that had that compelling power to make two very strong men who ordinarily wouldn't be made fools of by any woman lose their equilibrium completely. It wasn't just beauty or sexiness. It was an extra ingredient. To him, the extra ingredient is mystery and that unpredictability that keeps men off balance, wondering what's coming next. Rachel Ward, who played that character, moved to the United States in 1977 because she started appearing in television advertisements. You might have remembered seeing her as a Lincoln Mercury Cougar Girl or maybe even the Revlon Scoundrel Girl. She quickly broke into the acting scene and definitely left her mark in quite a few films and television series. Her mother in the film is played by Jane Greer. Miss Greer was born in Washington, D.C., and one of the things that she contributes to her success in Hollywood is the fact that in 1940, at the age of 15, She suffered some type of facial palsy, which paralyzed the left side of her face. She recovered from this, but the condition may have contributed to her patent look and a calm, quizzical gaze that RKO went on to promote her as the woman with the Mona Lisa smile. She claimed that those facial expressions that she used to overcome the paralysis that she had taught her the importance of facial expression in conveying human emotion. Take a look at this film. It's not a great one, but it's still a fun watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.